Kevin was getting just sitting in the car while we did that was probably worse than the accident itself. <laughs> All right, guys, we're live for episode four of uh, Meetup Monday. Memorial Day in the U.S., but we're hanging out with all Canadians. I don't know. I don't know if that's a good thing or not. But uh, we've got uh, Phil and Derek from Martini. We've got Russ and Rob and Catherine and Malcolm from uh, Rusty Rotors, and then we got Pete, Kyle, and John from uh, A Team. Let me just. But we're hanging out. Let me just mute it so that we can yeah. have double audio. All right. How's it going, everybody? Great. Good. Good. Excellent. Awesome. So we gathered all the Canadians together because they kind of stick together in the paddock and and uh, look out for each other. And uh, I don't know how many times this week since I announced that you guys were all coming on that we had to have a sorry counter on the bottom of the screen here. Every time we say sorry, somebody's got to take a shot or something like that. So. But uh, why don't you guys just start and tell uh, all the viewers what uh, uh, what team you're with and uh, how you got into racing. I don't know. Let's start with Bill. I, I think Pete should go first because he started yeah. this problem. All right. Let's start with Pete. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I'm, uh, I'm Pete from the, uh, from the A team. And uh, we started um, in uh, 2009 with the, uh, the other series. Uh, known as Chump Car at the time, and um, I got a call from uh, uh, my good friend uh, Bob Reimerchuk, who unfortunately passed away a few months ago, but he called me in 2009, he told me about this thing, and uh, it, it was, uh, we, we couldn't believe it, like, to get out there, run a, it was the first 24-hour race on, that anybody had ever done in that class of racing, uh, it was at Portland. It was the um, the first, and I think it was the only 24-hour uh, race that Portland has ever had. And uh, he told me about it, and I said, "Yeah, let's do it. I'm in." You know, we we had raced many years before, but I'd, I'd taken a long break, and uh, I didn't think I'd ever get back into racing again. And um, it was uh, then it was a challenge to get a team together. I called Rob. Rob got a hold of some other guys, and we put a team together. We found a car. We put together a, a, a stock CRX, and uh, and we went for it. And it was lasted how many laps? How many races that car made? Oh, uh, John's got all the specs on how how uh, many miles that car had on it till we retired it. It was it was unbelievable, but. But but that was the, a that was a really really good event and uh, the was, circumference of the earth and a little bit more in race miles. Oh my gosh! And this is the black the black ninety nine CRX. The black ninety nine, which we retired uh, last year, and uh, we basically replaced it with pretty much the same car and uh, just a fresh chassis, fresh engine, fresh everything, and um, it's it's still got some bugs to work out, but uh, it it did very well in uh, in Portland in October. We were really pleased. Cool, awesome. So who joined? What car came next? Was it Martini car or was it the twenty seven car? No, I think it was the twenty seven. The yeah, the blue and white rabbit. So yeah, when was when was your first race? I can't remember. It was at Portland, I think. It was 2010. It was the following year. Yeah. We were we were driving down to uh, the MotoGP, and Pete was heading to Spokane to do the 24, and Russ said, we're going to build a jump car. We were there Halloween next. In huh. a 1980 Rabbit that uh, has been built over the years, and what's the that current... The current situation of that car, where, where is it at right now? Uh, we cut it in half and we stuck half of it on my workshop wall because okay. uh, it kind of got crashed. <laughs> it was kind of rusty. It was rusty, yeah. We shouldn't have bolted it into a race car because it was a rusty piece of junk to start off with. And then, so you cut that car in half and then built another one? Yeah. In six weeks? Yeah. Crazy. But that, that first car, I think every time we took it to a race, it had some different engine co configuration from a turbo to not a turbo to cagetronic to something else. And 
We had uh, Carrara G60 fuel injection on it. And er every time we raced it, it had some different setup. That sounds kind of like the start of the second car, the 272 car. It started yeah. off as a 2.5, and then now it's a 1.18. It's a 1.18 now, yeah. Next is so what's next? It wasn't any fun to drive with that five-cylinder. It sounded really cool, but it just wasn't a fun car to drive. It, it didn't have enough grunt. And then, Phil, you guys came in with your Mark yep. II. We just saw a picture of it before we started talking there, a red one. And yeah, we uh, back yeah, in... Well, Pretty sure it was, I thought it was 2010, but uh, 2011. Yeah. We basically had a, a, another friend of ours um, went to Derek and said, hey, we can go racing for 500, with a $500 car. And Derek came to me and my brother and he's like, hey, let's go racing for, with a $500 car. And so thousands of dollars later, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> we finally went to our first event. And our first event was uh, in Portland. Portland, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and we finished, I think at that event, both days, we finished in the top 10 and we were like, hold on a second, yeah. we could probably do all right here. <laughs> so, um, developed the car a little bit more motor swap and, uh, and off we went. So it was good. And then our, yeah, our, it, yeah, it was, it's been a great car since. Well, actually, no, my apologies. No. That car only lasted three races. We went, to, <laughs> we went to the 24 in Spokane as our third race and 18 hours in, we got uh, we got nudged in the rear and the car got put in the wall and uh, and bent it up firewall pedal plus everything was bent up so we built the current car we have now. Cool. Yeah. So tell me about your guys's racing history before you got into this kind of stuff. Did or some of you did you just start with this or or were you all racing in some form before this? Um, I, I've been I've been racing motorcycles for a long time, motocross and road racing, before I moved to Canada. And then uh, when I moved to Canada, I quit because I couldn't afford it. And then uh, got my son into motocross once we could afford to do a little bit of racing. And then uh, then we got into the jump car thing. So, cool. What about the rest of you guys? I know I know I know a little bit about each of you. So I know Derek was into karting a lot. Uh, yeah. Still is, I think. Uh, no, I haven't gone in a while, but uh, yeah, I started karting when I was 12 and then I raced go-karts till like, I don't know, for like 12 years. And then, then yeah, I started doing the, the chunk car lucky dog thing and I, I haven't been in a go-kart in, I don't know, maybe three years since TBC maybe, but I haven't. Yeah, the, the the guys keep the NJ guys keep telling me to come out. So, but I haven't had time yet. Yeah. So, I guess the one one race that you guys had in common at the very beginning was the thirty six hour in Spokane. Why don't we talk about that for a little bit? Because that seemed like a kind of defining point in this in this uh, kind of endurance racing thing. It brought in a whole bunch of new people, um, and everybody seems to go back to that point in and 2013 I think it was and and it was like seven years ago now but people are still talking about it and the one thing that sparked up a lot of talk over the last month doing these meetups is that maybe we should do something like that again hell yeah <laughs> yeah yeah, uh, yeah. No. so yeah, we a strong no God. Yeah, definitely not. That that was a brutal race. <laughs> never again. Never again. It was, it was thirty-six. You got to do a thirty-six. That was epic. It was. We the longer the race, the better. <laughs> Let's talk about it. What, what, what happened there? I I know how Martini did, but how did the rest of you guys do? And what John actually? John, do you remember where we where we ended up in that race? Um, not off the top of my head. We we had to replace a clutch about half well i don't even know what i was thinking halfway through 12 hours but we're talking about 36 so yeah halfway through the race i think uh yeah, sometime on the saturday control. evening i think yeah yeah um, it was saturday night just, we race. <laughs> yeah. just exhausting <laughs> i think we had we, we blew our there. engine after 13 hours <laughs> and uh the week before we decided gee we haven't got a spare engine guys we better find something and we looked on the classifieds and found a passat motor 16 valve we just put a timing belt on it, nothing else. Blew the engine at 13 hours. Took us three hours to change it. Martini guys were put it next to us. They were diving in head first as well. 
and we got the track got the car back on the track still with 20 hours of the race to go and i think we ended up 20 we ended up 25th didn't we yep yeah yeah and that 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 classified engine ran like a top it was awesome 100 100 bucks came out of the guy back of the guy's jetta opened his trunk here's the engine (laughs) (laughs) you know what's funny a couple of times you like i was talking to son of andre in week one And they said the same thing, you know, you keep it simple and keep it factory. It seems to run longer. Um, You can go faster building stuff, but the reliability seems to go away a little bit sometimes. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So (laughs) what about Pete and John and Kyle? What about you guys with with your engine luck? Do you guys always run stock engines or do you? Yeah, dead stock. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> no, they, no, pretty much pretty much um, <laughs> dead stop <stuff>, right <laughs> <laughs> at 36 hour i can't remember which engine i think we were still running the 1600 um oh, yeah. it was yeah. i think it was a VTEC at the time but i can't remember i think it was pretty and, much a bone stock d16 y yeah. series whatever that's um, right yeah and uh that the motor ran and ran no no issues with the engine at all it's just yeah. the clutch blew up and uh, I think I think we had one little incident. We had a little fender bender there. We had to straighten out. But, yeah. um, other than that, uh, the car was pretty strong. But we had we had a good team. We had uh, uh, eight guys, and we were very well organized. We said this group is going to run daytime. This group, the four guys, are going to run night. And then the first time the car came in the pits, it all went for crap. And everybody- <laughs> <laughs> Like we had we had sleep schedules showed and everything yeah. and yeah twelve hours in we were we were all that was in the garbage yeah totally totally well and we we had a hotel room that we were shuttling back and forth a couple of them between as well and it just we were trying to everybody wanted to be in the hotel room and after a while it was just <laughs> ended up being forever so I think by the end of that race it was it was hard to find any of our eight drivers to get in the car to finish it yeah nobody <laughs> you guys nobody wanted to finish it. <laughs> So a team had eight drivers. Phil, how many did you guys have? Like five? Four. Four. We had four. We had four drivers. Crap. So wow. who was it? Was you and Derek and uh, Rob, Rob and Paul? And Paul. Yep. yep. And Ross, how many drivers did you guys have? I, we I had don't remember. Six. We had six. We had six. Because we had Josh. Right. Uh, you, me, Josh. Adam. It was six. Aaron. Did, have, did Aaron, Aaron drive for us? Yeah. yeah, Aaron, yeah. And, Bruce. Aaron. and Bruce. Bruce. Bruce finished it for us. Yeah. <laughs> we miss Bruce. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that's one thing uh, that uh, is tough to talk about, but uh, two of these teams have lost members in the last couple of years, and uh, they really, you know, made an impact on the Lucky Dog and Chump Car Paddocks and, and Bruce K and, and – uh, Bob Reimer Chuck will always remember those guys, and we're having the uh, Bob's Memorial Race at Area 27 later this year, uh, which is going to be the first event in Western Canada for Lucky Dog slash. Well, Trump Car did go to Alberta once, but in the in the near uh, recent times, it's uh, the first race in Western Canada, and it's kind of something that. I guess a lot of the teams don't realize is that to be up in Canada and to race in Lucky Dog or any other series, you're crossing the border and you, and currently with the situation we have, all the Canadian teams are stuck in Canada and can't come down and race. So um, as well as, you know, dealing with, you know, every race, the cost is different because the dollar goes up and down. So, um, you know, that's one thing for – there's a lot of Canadian teams that have to battle a lot of other factors other than just getting a car ready and going to the track. So we always appreciate the Canadian teams, and I like hanging out with my fellow Canadians. So. Well, well being that you're Canadian, you understand it, right? So it I totally understand. That you're an official. And, yeah, you make, right. it, you make it work for us too. Yeah, so I'm super excited to – Area 27, uh, which is October, sold out in eight hours. So oh, – wow. 65 teams going to area 27 first ever sanctioned race there outside of their own club it's going to be an amazing weekend so but um looking forward to it for sure 
Yeah. It's gonna be gonna be the shortest drive we've I've ever had because it's only two hours away, not even two hours from us. Um, whereas every every race is eight to ten hour drive or tow every race, both ways. So this is gonna be beautiful. Just I can sleep in my own bed on race night. It'll be great. <laughs> awesome. My Oliver. Okay. Yeah. Um, why don't we talk about you guys' favorite uh, favorite tracks? Where's your favorite place to race? What's like Seattle? Seattle. Really? Pacific. Yeah, really? I, love, I love Pacific. I don't know what it is. Wow. I mean, actually, since they since they did the repave, it's not as exciting. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, I I don't know what it is. Everybody's so scared of that track, but uh, or you know, worried about that track. And while yeah, there's been a lot of wrecks, and I, I've I myself have wrecked my own my own car there at a track day. Um, but it's just it's just a fun track. I don't know what it is. I just really enjoy it. So. <laughs> It's got fast, it's high speed, right? It's got fast corners. It's, yeah. you know. Yeah, it's, 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 it's just fun. I just hang, like it. Hang on and but, keep the, the throttle pedal mashed to the floor. Absolutely. So, I mean, I haven't done Area 27 yet, but, uh, you know, I hear after you do Area 27, that that's the next most favorite track. So. I mean, I like the Ridge too. The Ridge is just one of those tracks where every single corner is a fun corner and you look forward to it every single lap. First time I did the Ridge, I was sick. I was sick as a dog. I couldn't wait to get up. <laughs> Mark, going down the straightaway and sticking my hand out the window trying to get air and taking breaths because I was like, I'm going to puke. Yeah. <laughs> the ridge is my favorite. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I like the ridge. ridge. Um, I find that I like sections of track, you know, not necessarily one track. I, I love the ridge, absolutely. But we've been to Portland so many times and, you know, different tracks. I like Pacific. I like the come back up the hill through the chicane. You know, kind of the same in, in Spokane, the, the back, the chicane on the back stretch, you can go through that kind of flat out. And it was just, just sections of track speak to me more than a particular track. I mean, I love them all. Anytime I'm in the car, I love it. But um, yeah, it's more of the corners that speak to me than, than the whole track as a well. whole. I, I find if, if you could take the ridge and, and the corkscrew from Laguna and, and replace the corkscrew at the ridge with, with that one, it would be the perfect yeah. track for me. I mean, yeah. I, I, Laguna was a lot of fun and I think, for me, when I drove that, it was more the, the fact that you're driving kind of a, a dream track. Um, but the Ridge, to me, is the most fun to drive, except for the corkscrew. <laughs> you, know. you, you want a bigger job. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think the Laguna, or the, uh, the Ridge is a Laguna of the North. You know, it's, yeah. it's got a little bit of everything. And this is about the history. It'll be real interesting to see when, when they finish the uh, pedestrian bridge and get that all done. Mm -hmm. That'll be really nice. To, yeah. Yeah, that's to come along interior. pretty well. And and there's also a new chicane section that uh, the track was forced to put in. They ha they've always had a chicane there on the front straight that was almost never used, but they've had to put in a new chicane for the Moto America race that's going to happen uh, this year, the motorbikes. Um, and we're going to employ that in the September Ridge race. So we'll run some uh, sections of the – that one's a tournament format, so we'll run sections – or. Uh, a few segments of the weekend will run with the chicane as well. So that should be interesting. That should be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we talked a little bit about Laguna. I think everybody's raced Laguna that's on here. Yeah. So actually I haven't, I'm, I might be the only one I was moving no. to Alberta at the time. Yeah. Unfortunately. And no Derek either. Yeah. Mar Martinis. We've never raced there. No, none of us have, we have the oh. cars that created there. So you guys have been there, but you haven't, you didn't race there. No, we've been there. Yeah, I've been there several times. I uh, saw American Le Mans there, uh, Superbike, well, uh, all that kind of stuff. But uh, uh, never yeah, taken. Yeah, never taken number ten. Yeah. Russ, Russ and Rob, tell me about your uh, Laguna experiences because you guys have had some of the your favorite trips. I think going to Laguna, uh, pack up the whole family, everybody goes, and uh, tell me about some of your Laguna experiences. We should really default to Mr. Memory, Robin. <laughs> uh, we've had some oh. decent results there too. I think we've, we've yeah, we we've got a we, third uh, there for sure one time. <laughs> well, we came we came fourth uh, one year. Uh, that was wait, the third time we were there, and then we the next year we came third in the Western Championship, our Western region, which was awesome. And we had a the the guys beside us in a Mustang. They lent us a pair of vice grips that we had to clamp onto the steering rack to hold it in place so that the steering wasn't slopping back and forth. And we took that off in 
in the uh, post race inspection, we took it off and handed it back to them. So I think we think you wired it on. You go down the straight and the steering wheel would be 90 degrees one way and the next lap would be 90 degrees the other way because the rack was shifting in the, in, across on the firewall. <laughs> yeah. Catherine, why don't you tell me about the, the race, uh, the last race before Bruce passed away at Laguna. You guys, uh, that was a, seemed like a, a good trip. You had uh, Aaron and um, Aaron was there and uh, the Gavin rest. Gavin was there, I think. Gavin was yeah, there, had, the kids were there. Yeah, we had, uh, it was four days of racing. So they got to race um, the Thursday, Friday, and then the Saturday, Sunday, and they had yeah. both cars. And it, they just did, you did one car each, the Thursday and Friday, because you just yeah. had the four drivers. And then when we were all there, both cars raced <clears throat> with the full team. Yeah, we had heaps of people down for that. It was a really good time. Yeah, it was pretty fun. Yeah, awesome weather, awesome track. Yep. Cool. So one thing that most teams don't know is that uh, there's a loony that's hidden at Laguna in Bruce's honor, and it's still there. I yep. checked it the last time I was there. It's there, um, and so that's always there at Laguna for Bruce. But uh, we miss him a lot, and uh, yeah, for sure. Yeah. yeah. We were hoping to get down and change its location so that you could move it again. Yeah. But no, we went and uh, saw it. We, we verified that it was there and uh, we decided just to, to leave it because it's a really good spot that it's in. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Um, wh who, like, I mean, we talk about rivals on track and a lot of your favorite rivals are on this call right now. Uh, I saw some videos this week of uh, last year at Pacific with the cars just nose to tail for m multiple laps with also another Canadian team, the Flying Lumberjacks. And uh, and by the way, Pete was driving for us. Well, there you go. That was Pete in the car for us. That's right. Our car wasn't there that weekend, yes. So yeah. other than other than people on this call... <laughs> Who are your other favorite rivals that you always love to battle with on track? Uh, I'll go. I'll go. Um, I would have to say probably we've had some really good battles with uh, Blue Bayou and, uh, and, and General Leaf. Um, those were always, yeah, it's, it's not very often that you, um, you know, have another team that you have no issues going door to door through a corner or anything like that. And you really, you learn, you learn about the car and, and the driver's capabilities and that. So um, they've always been a, a really fun one. Um, I've had some, I've had some good and bad battles with SMRT. Is, are they still called that? I don't know, the Honda Civic. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there. So um, had some, you know, ups and downs with them. But uh, I think for the for me, anyways, and my personal experience on the track, it's it's and of course you know it's nice to go with you know all of our local boys too, you know the lumberjacks and and the A team and and you know and and uh, Rusty Rotors there, you know all of us it, we just when I say, when we start going door to door, it, it, I just start having fun, right? So titleists usually seem to get themselves involved with us too. The titleists are really yeah. good. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. 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 So, I've spent a lot of time with three G on the track oh yeah uh, it's just yeah. interesting that it's more volkswagen stuff yeah glue bricks you know, those guys are always I mean, fun on track Ship well, and if, if we're, we're together we're uh, around the same speed so yeah. we end up staying together yeah yeah shift was fun too mm. yeah they always have reliability problems though <laughs> they either they either win or they're you know in the back <laughs> yeah. there's no like in between They've definitely had. They've definitely had their uh, their things happen. Let's say <laughs> head gasket failures, like you wouldn't believe. Yeah, it's right. too bad. I, I don't know. I heard they're changing the motor out of it now. So, yeah. I, I recall some big repairs over the years, but uh, I think the one the one weekend that really sticks out to me was a Portland race. I I want to say it was like 2014, and. Um, I think Rob was in the car for Martini, got hit at turn one at the chicane and knocked the whole back end out of alignment. And then Russ, uh, I don't know, I think Gavin might have been in the car and put in the Gavin, yeah. on the right. 
Yeah. So yeah. it was just like repair after repair. And I remember Porter Powers under the car trying to like push things back out. And, uh, but, uh, what, what are your, sorry, go ahead. Pry bars on the axle beam. Right. And it but, rained nonstop. We were working in the rain the whole time. It was so miserable. So what are your had, worst repairs at the track? What are, what are the worst ones you've had to do? I think I reckon it was the one, at the time at the Ridge when we, we couldn't stop the clutch slipping. We went through like three clutches and it was just leaking oil from the rear main and we couldn't fix it. And yeah, eventually like, okay. Even poured a can of Coke on it and it didn't help. <laughs> <laughs> but for about 10 seconds. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it's um, any one issue. It's when you have it eight times or 10 times over a weekend, like a broken axle. Yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah. And Pete would probably know about that a little bit more, but um, that was infuriating. And so it wasn't an accident per se, but it was a thing. And it, it was two Portland races in a row and we were actually good at the Ridge in between. So um, that was tough to take when you go, you have a really bad weekend, you do everything you can to replace it and fix it. And then you have, you know, a good race weekend in between, and then you go back to Portland and have it all happen again and lose two races. And the yeah. exact same, exact same issue. On yeah. the plus side, if there was a world record for changing a Honda front axle, I feel like we, we beat it at some point in, the, in those yeah. eight minutes. <laughs> yeah, for about 12 minutes or so to change yeah. it. Five. <laughs> yeah. What about... Uh, we also... Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go for it. Uh, we also dealt with some uh, two races in a row at Portland, uh, sheared, sheared hubs. Um, both Kyle and I lost a, lost a wheel um, coming onto the back straight, I believe. I don't know where it was for you, Kyle, but um, yeah, we sheared, sheared hubs two races in a row at Portland as well. There's left front both times. And one time, we had, I think it was in the, it happened to me at night, and uh, we had to bring it down the pit lane and jack it up on the axle or on the, the hub that was left and to get it into pit lane and, and drag it back to our pit box. I mean, that was demoralized and have it two races in a row, and we thought we got that fixed as well. So. Yeah, yeah. Middle of the back straight in Portland, having the wheel come off was not not the most fun I've ever had. I'll, I'll admit that. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I watched that. <laughs> so that's that's a good segue. C ninety nine cruising through the grass and the tires taking off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. <laughs> what's, uh, what's been your worst on track experience? I know Malcolm has a whole bunch, but. <laughs> <laughs> he does a good job of putting it on video after so malcolm yeah, is it hitting on fire or is it the, hitting the tree at the ridge yeah well i did not hit the tree if you watch the video i missed it by like two inches but oh, right sorry uh, yeah uh that was yeah you know, by far the, the <laughs> scariest for me but uh i didn't drive the car when it was on fire there was that was uh, that was others that did Jeez. that <laughs> oh oh that was that Neal. Who was in the car when it was on fire at Pacific? That was Jason Stock. Yeah. Yeah. You mean the one when he put it out with the the water from the cool suit box? That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Last year. Yes, last year. Yeah. What, up, Derek? Yeah. What about you? I, I seem to recall uh, a near a near miss, kind of at the ridge with uh, this green rover. Uh, yeah, I remember that. Um, <laughs> We're going to the front straight, and I think uh, I was I was lapping him or something like that, and uh, tried to thread the needle, and he didn't give me the space, and he just pitman maneuvered me, and uh, sent me off, I think, to the outside on the right side, and then I thought I was gonna roll because the car was sliding through the dirt, so I was bracing for the roll, but it didn't roll. But yeah, yeah, yeah I that was a good near miss. Phil? It wasn't a near miss. That was a, that was a hit. <laughs> <laughs> what was I think with that one, the scariest part is sitting in the pits and and knowing that the card gone off and we're on the radio going, Derek, are you okay, Derek? And they were just calling and calling. We're like, what in the hell's going on? It's just you know, obviously there's dust everywhere. Yeah, massive this dust. This is at the end of the straight, right? So we're like, holy cow! And it took him a little while. And uh, yeah, I think it was probably scarier for us than it was for him. I remember at the end of that race, lifting up the hood, and the whole engine bay was just like thick with brown dust, like yeah, crazy. Yeah, it was bad. It was Phil, bad. what about you on track? Uh, I don't think I've really had any 
maybe I'm not going fast enough. I haven't really had uh, too many incidents like in our car or anything like that. Like I've had, like I, like I said earlier, I mean, I've, I've wrecked my own car uh, in Seattle, but, um, but as for running in the league with all these guys, I mean, had small offs and stuff like that, but nothing every where it's, you know, browned my pants or anything. Right. So that's, that's pretty good. Not that I can recall anyways. So I had some minor moments, but nothing crazy. So what about your, uh, what about your uh, Pacific in your streetcar? So you, uh, <laughs> yeah, I, I, uh, I, I lost the, the back end came out on me in turn one and, uh, and I put it into the big embankment right before turn two there. So, um, shifted the front end of the, the front end of the car over about a foot and a half and buckled everything and destroyed it. So yeah, that was an expensive tow home. And you were what okay. Kind of, what kind you of car was it? Uh, it was a, it was a, a turbo VR six GTI. So I was humming, I was cooking pretty good. <laughs> and you walked away. Okay. No injuries. Yeah. So I had a half, I had a half cage in it and uh, doors opened up. No problem. Everything. Um, and uh you know i had i had pretty heavy whiplash and all that the next day was the worst obviously but yeah. other than that yeah what about, along. The, rest, what about the rest my first race back to seattle my first race back to seattle i was a little nervous and then after a while i got comfortable and you know realizing that it was just the reason why i had my previous accident was just it was my own mistake and uh you know just getting past that and now like i said this i love that track yeah, yeah. that's fun that that yeah. that corner is fun yeah yeah. The little cars, you can go in there so deep and get on the brakes so late. Absolutely. And all the, the big Mustangs and so on, they're way behind on the brakes. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's fun. It's a good job. Rob, Russ, what about you guys on track? Any Code Brown moments or uh, near misses? or? Uh, not, not, not. Uh, I mean, uh, we had the oil line blow on the oil cooler going down the back stretch at Portland. And it sprayed the tires full of oil and the car just turned right into the wall. And I thought the car was destroyed and it bounced into the grass on the left-hand side. And when we finally got it towed back to the, uh, the pits, there was hardly any damage to it really at all. I think we just bent an axle and cleaned up all the oil, took the oil cooler off and we're back on track in about an hour. But it was a hard hit. I mean, it, I thought the car was destroyed, but there wasn't much damage at all. Right. What about the A-team? I remember one. Uh, Everyone's going to defer to me. Was it one at Portland? Uh, where, Step up, John. Uh, turn one yeah. at the Giants, or yeah, we it was just pouring rain. Uh, Portland, twenty eighteen, I believe that that was the last race for that car. Actually, that was a yeah. black car. Mm -hmm. um, came out of the spray. I think we were passing a red Tiburon or something, um, but we couldn't see it in the spray. So as soon as it turned on, you know, it hit the brakes. I realized we were coming up to the chicane and giant motorsports was just there and I was on the brakes and had nowhere to go. I was aquaplaning. I was trying to steer away from them, going to the wall if, it, if that's what it took. But yeah, it jacked them up pretty good. I think they're kind of the rear end was on the hood of the car. And uh, yeah, yeah, that was, that was not good. Um, we ended up straightening it for Sunday, but um, thankfully for the, the sub belt. Um, that, that's what uh, I remember most about that. It, worked, it did its job. Yeah, so I was on the radio for that one. Uh, Dale was in Giant. I was driving with them. And uh, he's like, yeah, I got hit. And we're like, okay, is it bad? And he's like, and he, I think he was just completely out of it. He didn't know where he was or whatever. And we're like, can you drive it back to the pits? He's like, I don't know. I don't know. And, uh, you know, he, he eventually did. I think he did get it towed back. But then I went out next in the car. We kind of pulled it straight a bit. And we, I went out next. And on the first corner, the control arm broke on the back from after the damage. I guess it was cracked or something, and the, and the right control arm broke and spun the car on the first corner. But, uh, yeah, so, but. Uh, uh, sorry? No, no. <laughs> it's all good. No, it, it's, it's, just, <laughs> it's all good. It, it was just Portland weather, essentially. Yeah. Like, you can't see anything in the spray. It was getting dark. Um, I actually really like the idea that we might go to a, a rain light of some kind. Mm -hmm. um because i just had no idea cars were there um you know it it was just odd like i'd, I'd love to have a rain light especially if we're doing portland or something like that because it gets so dark and you know that the sun gets behind the trees and you just can't see anything especially when it's raining like anyway that yeah. was just a circumstance so yeah no we're we're starting to see rain lights on some cars and it's not mandatory obviously yet but yeah. i think next year maybe 
but we're starting to see rain lights. But yeah, that weather that year, it was insane. Like, I think that was the year that we had the, like the tornado that touched down yeah. across the other side, uh, other side of uh, I-5. But uh, that was insane. But uh, what's yeah. the, what's the worst weather you guys have raced in? Is that always at Portland or I've, I know the ridge has been pretty bad too. The ridge has been bad before. I think when when we were running the old car, still we uh, we didn't have the defrost unit in it, uh, the heater and stuff for a while. And I think there's one race at the ridge where uh, Pete, you might remember better than I do, but I think we had to park the car part way through the race just because we couldn't keep on top of the. Yeah, we had we had to stop on the Friday. It was uh, I think there was some sprint races happening on Friday, and we couldn't. Yeah. We just couldn't run. I mean, we were going down the straightaway with with a stick and a rag on the end of a stick trying to wipe the windshield, driving with one hand and wipe the windshield. And yeah. uh, we figured well, out too safe. That's not the same rag that you made when you were in Portland? The I think we used rag? the same one in Portland. I think it was the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think Portland's been the worst for us. Uh, yeah. The, the half an inch of running water in the pits when you need to lay down and fix the car. Yeah, it's not good. I have video of Aaron when the windshield wiper broke at Portland, it was pouring with rain and he couldn't see where he was going and his head's bobbing all around trying to see out the window going down the backstretch and he couldn't see a thing. And I always wanted to put it to, you know, do the video with uh, ZZ Tops arrested for driving while blind because it's, he, he can't see and he's going a hundred miles an hour down the backstretch, just can't see, it's awful. So, one thing that I've seen over the years is that a lot of teams try and add a second car to their stable and they could do it for a couple races and they're like, this is, this is too much work. This is more than double the amount of work than it is for one car. But Rusty Rotors has been one of those teams that over the years has been able to continue to bring two cars to almost every race. And why don't you guys – Talk about what that takes to, in the background, before you even get to the track, the logistics, being in Canada and all the stuff you have to do to get two cars to the track. It's just madness. <laughs> um, There's a reason that most people aren't successful. <laughs> it's a lot of work. Plus, plus we're on the island, so we've got to get, get the ferry over to get two cars and two rigs. And so yeah, run, run it through, it's kind of crazy. Run through the beginning of the of race week until you get to the track, and and then set up and stop. <laughs> you can't run through a shit show. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of um, emails. Luckily, we we travel with a lot of drivers. So if we take two cars, we usually take um, four drivers per car. So there's a bit of uh, job delegation for people to get certain aspects ready and you we just have to rely that they get their end ready and uh, for some strange reason it just falls into place it's never really seen in fact we find that when we're ready to go ahead of time we have worse races than when we leave in a pack yeah. so we, we do. we're done getting ready ahead of time yeah but there's there's a whiteboard with it's just split and it's got the 27 on one side and 272 on the other and we just write down a bunch of stuff that we need to do and, 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 that, and that's Catherine. I mean, there's Catherine that she's she's a star in that regard she gets us organized and it runs it like a, a swiss watch it's awesome um yeah. yeah we haven't actually publicly told you guys that uh, Catherine is a uh, director of statistics within the team That's, and uh, managing pit operations. Yeah. We, we, when we went to yeah, you uh, – we've, we've seen it before. When you guys don't respond, she's all over you. Like, oh, yeah. I'm glad we don't have her. <laughs> <I'm scared>. <laughs> <laughs> and be happy that you're not the one that didn't respond when you get out of the car. <laughs> because she may be small, but so is a stick of dynamite. <laughs> When we went to Utah and we had a, a rental driver come with us and uh, he'd raced all over the place and he, he, at the end of the weekend, he said, I've never seen anything like this. You guys are really organized. <laughs> so oh, yeah, it was nice to have someone from the outside say it. So these guys, they won't tell you, but they, they load up two cars. They get on a ferry that takes them from an island to a peninsula in Washington state 
they get off there. They have how many? You have a motor home, and you have. You, I know there's a VW. Um, uh, uh, Real, Realta. Realta. Yeah. yeah. And and you guys just show show up there. You always have the best food. You got uh, you know the whole setup there with uh, Sandy's up there, and and you got Sandy uh, and Sarah yeah, cooking. Okay. And Catherine keeping us in line. And you guys have brought – Aaron's not on the call, but bring the kids as soon as they're able to – they're basically born, they're at the track. No, that was Jason off. Stock. His kid was three weeks old, and yeah. they were camping in the freezing cold in a tent on the tarmac at the ridge. Yeah. 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 Started he was, he was six races old before he was a year. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. Kathy just asked if you guys would all do a 36 hour again. Yes. Yeah, I think so. Yes. yes. Yeah. It depends where yeah. though. If it was at ORP, no, wouldn't go. I wouldn't go back there in a million years. Can we actually beat the record and do a 48? Well, yeah, <laughs> we, were actually, a bit much. we were actually yeah. talking about that this week and how we could do something of how many races Lucky Dog is, is completed and one hour for every race weekend or something like that. But, uh, and it keeps coming back to Spokane. So, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> well, on the 4th of July? Back. <laughs> right. When it's 110 wow, degrees. Hot. Yeah. Yeah, Spokane is, Spokane is a tough one to do the long races on. I think, like, there's a lot of attrition there. Yeah. Um, obviously, I, I, you know, you get all the – get it doesn't clear – the air doesn't clear out very well. The dust doesn't clear out very well. You know, it's, it's bloody dark at night. Um, but – it's even 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 with that, you know, if you, it's still. I think it just seems to be that type of track because it's a little more flat and and uh, a little easier on parts. I think yeah. so. Yeah, Utah, thirty six. Utah. Utah. Pull up, I was just thinking that. Bridge. You know, when you said that, I was thinking Utah might that might be a good place to do that. We Go did back the there in a second. We, yeah. we did the twenty four there, and it was amazing. Right. Was it how long ago to get there? Well, so from again? the island? Yeah, like how, yeah, how long was it to, to get to Utah from the island for you guys? It's about the uh, same as Laguna Seca. Yeah, it was about 18 hours. 20, yeah. 18, 20 hours. But that's not including the ferry to the island. It's 20 driving hours. Yeah. From when you get off. So you got to show up to the ferry an hour and a half before, and then it's an hour and a half long, and then you got to go through customs at the other end. So the ferry is like three hours. Right. Okay. So what's the longest you've towed? Is that the longest, 20 hours to get to a race? Yeah. And what's the shortest? The shortest Pete's gone longer. Long Pete's gone to Willow Springs. Oh, yeah? Great. <clears throat> Willow, yeah, we did go Willow, Willow Springs first year. That was the second race in the series. Oh, yeah, that's right. 2015. Yep. Yeah, that was uh, – that was – no. no oh, that, that was probably right? 2010. Oh, and in, uh, in the Chump Car. In the other series, yeah. Yeah. It was, it was essentially 29 hours down, 24 hour race in between, and then 29 hours back. <laughs> yeah. For us, it was exactly 24 hours from the island. So Once basically, every the, race yeah. is a 48 hour for a yeah, Canadian. Pretty much. <laughs> yeah. Right. The ridge is pretty close for us. The ridge is, yeah. As long um, as the Coho Ferry is running. Yeah. yeah. Nobody said different. sorry yet. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. So when was everybody's first win? Twenty-four. Uh, Twenty-four in Spokane. Six hour. Yeah, uh, we, yeah. Our win was the six hour at Portland. I don't remember the year. Well, we pretty we early a, for you guys. We got a third in our first year with the with the rabbit. Yeah. You know, with the new rabbit. Because it was a twelve and a six, I think, and we got a third in the sixth. But we have, we've only got one first. I think no. so, yeah. But yeah. I think, I don't recall where it was. It, it was, was at Portland. That was the time we were at, it was a six-hour race, and we gambled rain. somehow with this, the, the fuel strategy, and we only refueled the car once. And it ran out and of you fuel. And you ran out of gas. The flag. Yeah, yeah, we couldn't start it up to get it, to drive it back to the trailer. It was, a, it was out of gas. The race, we let you guys our tires, right? Yeah, that was a Dresses, I think, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. on your yeah. tires. Welcome. Yeah. <laughs> you see, that's the friendship. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't have one of their drivers in the car, we got one of their tires on. <laughs> Just two yeah. tires. Two tires on the Saturday. 
Yeah. I remember a, a race win that Martini had at, at Pacific, similar to that, where they pulled the car up to the trailer and then the upper rad hose blew right at the trailer. Yeah. yeah. Literally right wow. at the end of the race. It was crazy. Yeah. Lucky. We also had a we had a good one uh, in Portland. We had a we had a win there, and um, we put Rob in the car for the last stint. And we looked at the brake, we looked at the pads, and we we're like, "Oh boy, we got no pads left." And we told him, "We're like, hey, yeah. you don't have you don't have much left for pads. Like, you got to just take it easy. You just got to do some maintenance here. Just bring it home." And you know, an hour later, he sets fastest lap of the race. You know, and we're like, whoa, 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 just take it easy. And, uh, like, oh, well, it's because he wasn't using the brakes. Yeah, right. So, like, probably, probably like five laps before the end of the race, he blew the chicane and he's on the radio going, uh, guys, we're like, yeah, he's like, I got no brake pedal. We're like, uh, we told you, right? So, he ended up, yeah, he would have to like pump the pedal and try and get in. He's on the handbrake whenever he can, slowing the car down and gearing. And he came through the hot pits and we're coming up to uh, post race there, and he's like, "Get out of the way!" And you know, <laughs> smoke coming out, and, and like he blew the piston out of the caliper when he was coming into post race, and then just like flames, and yeah, it was yeah, that was bad. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah. So, what are your favorite moments of racing in these Lucky Dog, Trump Car, whatever endurance racing? What are your favorite, either your favorite on track memories or favorite? memories of the weekend or what? yeah for, for me i was we were i think we did a 14 hour race at the ridge and i think it ended at 10 o'clock at night and yeah. i was chasing the gi joe show that taurus yeah i don't know i haven't seen them for around for a while but uh it was raining it was it was dark and we the two of us were just slicing through traffic like crazy it was it was awesome and eventually he pulled over and let me by, and he came by it to the pits afterwards. He, I had these Chinese HID headlights in the car, and he just said, I couldn't take your headlights in the mirror anymore. I just had to let you go. <laughs> uh, it was awesome. You know, call it sentimental, but just rolling up to the track after a long tow or something and seeing everybody and uh, kind of stage and going through tech and all that, just because just we don't see everybody, we're a long ways away and not necessarily on the island with uh, the other teams or, you know, in Vancouver, but – just rolling up to the track and just seeing the track as you drive up is just makes the weekend for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think I have to admit that trying to pick out favorite moments from, you know, all the years we've been running it, it's pretty challenging to do. I mean, we've had so many great battles in, in races. We've had great finishes, all this kind of stuff. But at the end of the day, it's, it's just like John says, that feeling of being at the track, um, you know, the, the evenings after the race is done and, and you're cracking a beer with everybody and uh, everyone's scrambling to work on the car and, you know, all those types of experience, I think that's, that's what sticks in my mind the most. Yeah. For me, it's uh, getting through a weekend and not having to lay a finger on the car all weekend. Yeah. <laughs> that's those what are the best. Like. <laughs> weekend. Yeah. You know, just a little bit of maintenance Saturday night, have a few beers with the guys and, and, uh, and just everybody gets a chance to drive the car, you know, and, and no issues. That's an awesome weekend. They're the ones where you just stop to put fuel in, change your driver, and go. And, and, yeah. and like I said, you, you nothing wrong with the car. It's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. We've had a few of them. We have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Be nice if they were all like that. Yeah. 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 Phil, what about you? Uh, you know, I mean, obviously, we, I like getting to. I like getting to the track. I love that part. Um. I think the, the post races are always a good time. You know, we can actually, you know, like Pete said, crack a beer, talk to the guys, talk about some racing, you know, um, grill Rob Gray a little bit, you know, <laughs> just uh, <laughs> have, have, some fun, have some fun with all the guys. You know, I mean, that's like every time we go to the track, you know, we always, we obviously, we show up and we want to be competitive and all that stuff. When the flag drops, we're racing. Um, you know, but, uh, I've always, you know, every, every weekend I'm like, if we're not, if we're here and we're not having fun, this isn't worth it. Right. You know? So, yeah. um, yeah, I just, I just enjoy being out there. And even all, you know, we have all the Canadian guys on, on the meeting right now, but I mean, even seeing all those guys is, you know, we, when we roll up and, you know, seeing all the teams that we race against and, you know, the night before we can actually have a beer with them and, and, you know, bullshit with each other and stuff like that. Um, I, I enjoy that. The camaraderie around the pits and stuff like that is, is awesome. 
what have you guys, you guys have all been around for a long time. What, and, and the landscape has changed a lot since 2009 to 2020, but you guys have all still keep coming back and maintaining being competitive on track and always finding some, somebody to battle with. And I mean, Martini, you guys, you guys were away for a couple of years, having families, getting married. Um, you guys came back after a long, relatively long hiatus uh, yep. Yep. to Pacific last year and, and we're right there again. So what, uh, what's been the secret to, uh, well, uh, the secret, um, we can't um, tell you all of our secrets. Yeah. Um, <laughs> no, I think, I think a big part of it is like we go through the car and we do, we do all the maintenance and we make sure that, you know, um, we try and use OE parts as much as possible. Um, and you know, yeah, the, the maintenance is the big thing. And then after that, it's just like, you know what, we, we literally, for us to be, to try and finish well, um, we have to drive that poor little car 10 tenths all the time. You know, like we have to always be on the edge, especially, you know, you're a lot of, there's a lot of faster cars in the series now. And I mean, we, we cut our teeth in, in the old series, um, and did reasonably well, but now, you know, there's, there's a lot of fast cars, but if you're not on track, you know, you're, you're losing time. So I think it's just a matter of keeping it clean and, and, uh, you know, no contact, you know, with all the racing. So we've been running that car since 2011. I think we have the one hit that we talked about earlier with Derek and, uh, and a couple of small dents in the left front fender. But for the most part, we try and keep it really clean because you know, you don't want the damage. You want to stay on track. Oh, sorry. And Rob's Rob's hit in Portland, but, um, yeah, just maintenance, keeping, keeping the car maintained. And, you know, if you think something's gonna, you know, be worn out, just, we just replace it. Cause we do, we would rather do it at home in the garage than do it at the track. Yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, and car, yeah, 10 tenths, car. man, we gotta, we gotta run that poor little motor 10 tenths. Yep. Yeah. I, yeah. Derek runs it at 11 tenths. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> well, and he's got the weight advantage too. So yeah. 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 <laughs> What, um, we'll go through each, each one of you guys. What's, what's your favorite format to run on the weekend? Like how many hours each day or like what variation of 24 from Phil, Russ? <laughs> I, I like the long races. 24s are a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, that 14 was a lot of fun too. Rob? Uh, 24 is a, a challenge. 12, 12 and 7 or 12 and 8 was good. Um, I don't know. I'm happy with it all. Anytime I get to spend time in a car, the double sevens have been good. There's nothing like getting into a race car like at two thirty three in the morning. Yeah, when you're the pits up flat out. Going into turn one, it's awesome. Kyle, where you, where you can't see your brake markers, but you just have to. You know, you're waiting for that one bump yeah. in the track to hit the yeah. tail. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I can't say that I, I'm in love with the 24-hour racing anymore. Um, I, I think I, I got over that with, you know, probably our, our third or fourth. I, I don't know how many we did. But um, I, I, it might have been with the other series, still Trump Car. But uh, I think we did the one weekend where we ran, you know, four or five sprint races. Uh, and then we did a short enduro. And then, like I said, for eight hours the, the next day. And um, to me, that, that was such a fun format uh again that kind of mix of the sprint races where we got each driver in the car for a sprint race and then still getting the endurance race and then i, I really enjoyed that for sure pete yeah i like that format uh, i i do enjoy the double sevens uh seven and an eight and maybe finish off the weekend with some sprint races or maybe a three day and do a day with sprints something like that i like uh the 24 hours we like like uh, Kyle said. We've done we've done so many of them, and and my vision isn't that great at night anymore. And it, I just find it real tough to see. And uh, I I find at night I basically what I do is I just find somebody I latch onto, and I'm just kind of putting in time. I'm not even really racing. I'm just getting the car around the, the track. And um, I I much prefer just running in a day and and racing. Yeah, for me anyway. Malcolm, I, <laughs> uh, I I kind of like the long ones. The the fourteen hour race was amazing. Uh, something like uh, twelve. I'm not going to say twelve and eight because uh, for for four drivers having an odd number of uh, hours really works well for for uh, 
not having to run in the car for two hours. Right. So we, we do better if it's an hour and 41. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> not to tell you our fuel capacity issues, but an hour and 41 works really well. Yeah. John, what about you? Um, I like what both Kyle and Pete said, obviously, but uh, I do like the odd number races and the little bit like 12 hours would be 10 to 12 hours is good. Um, but really it worked out with us having odd number because dad wasn't running as much recently. Yeah. So Kyle, Pete and I would do the ma majority of the driving. So having an odd number kind of worked out. It got, got Bob in the car and then gave us kind of full stance the rest of the way. So cool. Derek. 24. 24. <laughs> yeah, the longer the better. <laughs> Catherine, what about you? She's muted. She's muted. She, 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 she's probably, she probably doesn't matter to her because she's doing all the work all the time anyways. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no sleep. Just so long as I get a chance to sleep, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> the 12 hours are good. Like, you know, it, it gives you a good break. You can, you know, it's a, still a pretty long day and stuff like that. It was a little bit longer. Is there anything about it's yeah, too like, short. Like, something like... You wake up in the middle of the night and you jump, jump in the car and you're just going full speed in the middle of the night. Like that's for me, like the funnest time. Yeah, like, that's. I get a kick out of that too. Dark. Like I, I like that 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 part of it. What when I could see uh, properly, I love that midnight, like pitch dark, four a.m. type stuff. But I also love the sunrise. Like if you yeah. didn't get it in the wrong, wrong place, but the the air was light, it was cold, and just that was beautiful. It was a great time to run. Yeah. yeah um what else was i going to ask you guys um what what are you guys working on outside i know a few of you working on other projects so tell me what you're working on outside of uh lucky dog cars and stuff what else are you working on car top wise? secret stuff oh come on <laughs> <laughs> you're never going to be able to leave canada anyway so it doesn't matter <laughs> working on we'll just call anyways. it car number three and that's it okay <laughs> Car number three, where are you? <laughs> Bill, what are you working on? I know you're working on something that's black. Yeah, yeah. I'm working on a, a Mark II Volkswagen GTI that I'm building up to do um, some, you know, CACC racing, uh, some vintage. I'm keeping it pretty period correct, 16 valve, um, you know, and that's good. That's my own. I'm building that for myself to go do some racing if i can't you know if i can't get down to the states to do some racing for you know a, a period of time um i want something i can run up here to get you know get some kicks and i can go on a sunday run the car still be home for dinner with family and stuff like that so it's uh yeah that's it's been a are long you, road so uh, are you at eight kids yet <laughs> yeah <I'm> right <laughs> <laughs> well i mean it depends depends on the race weekend <laughs> 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 Tell me about your uh, getting your license last. You got your license last year, right? Uh, two years ago. So um, I finished it up last year, I think, because I had to do all my novice races and stuff like that. So um, a friend of mine uh, by the name of Paul Haim, he was really encouraging me to get my, my proper race license. Um, and uh, so I did. And he lent me his car because I didn't have a street car to do it in. So he lent me his car to do it. And, uh, and then he lent me his, he's got a Datsun 510 and he has a BMW 2002. And uh, so my novice, my novice races, all that stuff I did, I, you know, I did it. One was in the 2002, one was in the 510. And then I got my proper, my race license and did last year, the BC Motor Historics in the 510. Um, which was a lot of fun, a couple of spins. So, but, uh, yeah, that's been, it's been, it's been good. I recommend it. I recommend it. And John and Kyle, we talked a little bit about some projects you guys are working on or going to start to work on soon. Why don't you, it kind of segues from Phil's, uh, cars there. Yeah. <laughs> well, well I, mean, I'll, I just moved back to actually back home, uh, with mom because life's happening, but, um, yeah, so we've got a couple of 510s uh, sitting that dad, dad's had for a while. Um, and now that we're kind of closer together, we can kind of pick up on that. And I know Kyle wants to spend more time in the Okanagan as well. So, Yeah, I think that's, uh, you know, dad was always a Datsun guy. And, and we've got these two 510s that we've been sitting on for quite a while. We, we used to race one of them at the Knock Mountain Hill Climb up in the Okanagan every year. Uh, but uh we knew dad had lots of big dreams for those cars. And I think for both John and I, that's 
kind of our, our going to be one of our ways we memorialize him as uh, kind of completing some of those projects. I and mean, it might take quite a while, but that's that one of our dreams. So that's uh, <laughs> yeah. Like like John said, now that he's home, we can we can eventually start on those. <laughs> yeah, it'll be awesome to see a five ten run up the hill again at Knox Mountain. Um, uh, that's okay. where I got into racing. That's the first time I ever went to the track and uh, went to a track and saw cars running. And for those of you who don't know, it's, it's basically a hill climb. It's a park that people go to every day and then they close it down on our May long weekend, which is the weekend before it was last weekend. Um, weekend before Memorial day, they close down the park and they run cars up the hill and it's one of the most dangerous uh, hill climb tracks around with cliffs on one side and big trees and and uh, seeing five tens and there's been a lot of Volkswagens run up there and and open wheel cars too but uh, it's a cool place to go and and I missed it last weekend not being able to go because it was cancelled but uh, it'll be exciting to see the five ten go up the hill again so well and just to tie that back around Jason that, you, we spoke about how we got into racing earlier. Um, I couldn't get my driver's license until I ice raced first. That was kind of how the old man started with, uh, with Pete and that back in the day. Um, but then the first, the only pavement racing I'd done before Chump Car Lucky Dog was up Knox Mountain, yeah. um, which is scarier than hell. So if you're doing it, <laughs> doing it fast, you're, you're on edge. It, it's scary. So yeah. yeah, that was the first pavement. Any time I'd driven fast legally on, on pavement was up mm -hmm. Knox Mountain. And that, that 510, we also ran an ice racer Chevette with 280Z engine in it up, hill, up the hill as well before we got the 510. And that was also scary. Yeah. <laughs> I'll put a link, I'll put a link in the, in the YouTube uh, uh, of this when I upload it. I'll put a link to some of the hill climb videos. Um, that place is just nuts. And anybody yeah. that uh, dares to go up it, I've seen some crazy crashes there. And, but man, is that place fast and, and, and fun to watch. You can watch from, you climb up the hill and look over, look over Lake Okanagan there and, and cars ripping up and down there. It's pretty crazy. So one of our, uh, one of our team members, uh, David Seville Peck ran yep. his uh, Can-Am race car there back in the, I guess, early, early seventies. Uh, and he had the record at that track for years and years and years yeah. at the hill. I yeah. think, I, I, I think uh, he ran a super seven at, at Knox as yep. well. Right? Regularly. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Like it was a. What did he run? It was a turbo and supercharged Hayabusa yeah. uh, Cataram Super Seven that he that he used to run up there. Yeah. yeah, I think he almost broke the record a few times with that. Yeah, yeah, cool. So with the border closed, no, none of the Canadian teams can go racing. When's the? What's the next race for you guys? I know you're all signed up for Area Twenty Seven in October, but. Uh, if the border opens up, what's the next race you're going to do? Mm. That's, yeah, we're, we're not really sure. If they open the border in the middle of June, we could conceivably get to the ridge at the end of June. Yeah. If there's uh, still thinking more September. Yeah, we're signed up for uh, the ridge in September. September yeah. ridge is going to be an amazing event with the tournament. It's going to have a little bit like we talked about with some sprints, some medium length enduros some longer Enduros, and it's going to have some night racing. And on two formats at the Ridge with the new Chicane, they have the new pedestrian bridge. It's going to be pretty crazy. Because we did that at Utah, and for the sprints, we had three, four, five hundred 500 people up on top of the balconies watching the sprints. It was, it was electric there. And so I'm going to try and repeat that uh, this year at the Ridge. But uh, I appreciate you guys all hanging out with me and – catching up and I haven't seen I've seen a few of you over the last couple months but good to see all you guys again and, and looking forward to seeing you all back at the track so sure yeah, yeah. thank and you very that, much guys um yeah. Jason by the way I want to want to thank you and and everybody else that might be watching or anybody in the Lucky Dog family um the support our family's received over the last few months has been amazing um from the whole community um we've all gotten messages from everybody in the series and couldn't be more thankful for it and, it and it certainly helps out so i just want to say thank you to to everybody involved lucky dog awesome cool yeah. well i'll see some of you on the sim track tomorrow and then hopefully in the next couple months i'll see you all back at the real racetrack yep. okay. Thanks, okay. Cool. Okay. Right. thanks jason thanks everyone thanks, thanks jason see you later. thanks, thanks for the invite